Welcome to our Picture This exhibition on the theme of a land alive. Picture This exhibitions encourage different kinds of creatives to draw their inspiration from one another's work. In this case, eight artists each produced three artworks on the theme of a land alive, and these artworks formed the inspiration for four writers. Our writers received sets of three artworks, randomly allocated from different artists. They were asked to write short pieces of flash fiction that followed these images in sequence. For their first piece, they simply responded to the three images that they were given and were asked to leave the ending slightly open for another writer to continue. For their second piece, they also received another writer's first piece and were asked to make their piece of writing follow on from the first half of the story. In this exhibition, you'll hear our writers reading their sections that they wrote aloud as we display the images that inspired these stories. I hope you'll enjoy this journey through the images, landscapes, and imagined scenes that have come to mind for our creatives on our theme of A Land Alive. Hello, I'm Sarah. I'm the curator of the project. I am an expat Aussie currently based in Sheffield, UK, and on this occasion I'm taking part in the exhibition as a writer. I'm a writer-illustrator, and my main written outputs include young adult queer supernatural romance, for which I'm currently querying my first novel, and short stories for grown-ups, which I read aloud each month in a grown-up story time. You can find out more about all of the creative work that I do, which also includes visual art, photography, and bringing other creatives together to curate projects like this one by following the Linktree link in the video description. I hope you'll enjoy our stories. Hello, my name is Lily Bratos. I am an artist from Cardiff, Wales. I like to experiment with lots of different mediums and styles, but for this project I've used mostly watercolour and mixed media. I decided I wanted to explore how nature grows over structures like stairs or buildings making them come alive. How life perseveres despite being interrupted by man-made objects. Hello, I'm Faiza, an aspiring visual artist based in Dhaka, Bangladesh. Living in one of the most densely populated and air polluted cities in this whole world, getting a breath of fresh air sometimes feels like a fantasy. A land alive to me is therefore a place where every living entity can breathe without having to worry about getting choked by the black smoke. Taking inspiration from my recent travels, I thus decided to paint landscapes as it is Mother Nature at the end of the day to whom we surrender for keeping our hearts pumping, for getting the air we need and everything else. Hi there, my name is Laurie Bell and I'm a writer of science fiction and fantasy. I'm an Aussie and I live in the southeast of the country. I'm contributing to this project as a writer. I write for adults and children. I also have a blog of weekly flash fiction pieces and reviews. I have six books published and you can find more about me online at solothefirst.wordpress.com. I hope you enjoy all of our stories and the incredible artwork contributed. Hi there, my name is Mavis. I'm a visual artist based in Nigeria. I love working with a variety of mediums, both digitally and traditionally, although gouache paint has been my favorite for a while now, which is what I used for all three of my art pieces on this exhibition. In terms of my style, I love experimenting with colors to create beautiful landscapes and emotionally charged scenery. And this exhibition has given me the opportunity to do more of that. Hi, my name is Kirsty McGregor and I'm a visual artist from Adelaide, South Australia. I work predominantly in watercolour and mixed media and my work looks at the environment and our interactions with it. For this project, I created a series of work looking at different bird life and different leaf life. I like looking at the colours and how they make me feel. I hope you enjoy looking at it. Hi, I'm Laurel. I'm currently based in Southampton, UK. For this project, I came in last minute to contribute with writing. 
I was intrigued by the title of the project and immediately inspired by the artwork. It speaks to what I value and cherish, which is our relationship with nature. As humans, we've lost touch with our natural world, and we see how we and the planet suffers for it. A lot of my work is centered around healing, our relationships with ourselves, and in turn with nature. I am currently working on self-publishing my first poetry collection. You can also find my work on Medium and Instagram. And I have recently started a new Substack newsletter. I'm very grateful to be part of this project and it has been amazing seeing how well this has all linked together. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Ina. I'm an artist, an animator and a game developer. I'm Ukrainian and Australian and currently based in Warwick, UK. In my art, I like trying different things, styles or techniques. With the project A Land Alive, I use soft pastels and concentrated on capturing a moment. Summer meadow under evening light, vortex of leaves, trees and branches that form into a kaleidoscope picture and a second before raindrops hit the ground. If any of my paintings are sold, all money would go to Ukrainian charity. My name is Nicole Spillane. I live in Melbourne, Australia. I am an artist. My usual medium is block printing or lino cut printing, and I've used that medium for this project. You can find more of my work on Etsy under the name Block Party Print Store. At the end of last year, we had a La Nina weather pattern in Australia and it rained almost every day during spring. This unusual weather pattern created an abundance of growth and insects in numbers we haven't seen for a very long time. For this project, I wanted to take a closer look at the details of some of these beautiful insects and the plants that they live in. My name is PSC Willis and I'm one of the writers for this project. I'm based in Shanghai, China, where I run casual writing meetups and co-run a fiction workshop. I believe that community and collaboration are hugely important parts of the writing process, which is why I was excited to get involved with this project. I write both short stories and novels, tending towards cosy, queer, optimistic sci-fi and fantasy. You can find my Twitter profile in the description if you'd like to see what I'm up to. I am an artist, a movement enthusiast, and recently I have become a new mother. I am currently running an indigenous art gallery on Wijibal Wireball Land. I am deeply inspired by Mother Earth, the patterns that she creates, and the way that she interacts with the built environment. My practice used to be predominantly acrylic based, but has since transitioned into a more sustainable practice. I go out onto Bunjalung Jogun and collect earth pigments and process them so they become a gouache or a watercolour. So yeah, Yahweh Bugle Bear. Hi, my name is Ray. I'm a researcher, a writer and an artist based in Southampton, England. I'm very pleased to have contributed several paintings as part of this project. In these, I've drawn on my general interest in material mergings and entanglings, but particularly between the ideas of what is eternal and what is fleeting. It was in the outback that the first clues came. The rivers dried and the earth cracked. The scent of death was in the air. We didn't listen. We didn't see. They were the first to know what was coming. They tried to warn us. The fluttering wings of colour that seemed to herd us away. First from the forests, then from the cities. 
Great swarms of colour against the arid landscape of bone-dry earth and crisp tinder wood. When the winds picked up, we didn't think much of it. Nothing showed up on the radars, and that is what we watched with great care. Then the rains hit. Hard. Torrential. Wild. Unprecedented, they all said. It wasn't. They knew. Change was coming. The world was turning and it was time to go. We didn't have a choice. We needed somewhere else. So we looked to the stars. How much misspent masculine pride and money was drilled into distant planets searching for a spring, whilst on Earth fresh water slid from ice caps to ocean. Water, the source of all life and fear, carving a destructive path, impossible to escape and to live without. They say they'll rebuild the world. According to whose definition and with what price tag? Earth Point 2 will never have every nuance of every childhood. We would rather run through ruined canopies remembering. Leafy green dappling the sunlight so we believed in magic. Capturing nature via nothing more sinister than ticks in an ice spy book. Now the steps that open to all those possibilities drop sharply to nothing. We're rendering our own reality. The glimpses we want to preserve but it glitches. Butterflies that ripple, their eyes blinking and far too literal. There's beauty in the falling stars and rising purple haze. What if this becomes all that's left? Disjointed, ill-rendered memories. Oversaturated colour, undersaturated smells. But ours, our piece of it, alive. The day I discovered it, it was the trees that made me go. I'd sat on a fallen log for a break, the temperature already stretching above 30, although I'd left at sunrise. Suddenly, I felt the land was speaking to me, the eucalyptus-scented haze reaching deep inside me, the hearts of the trees speaking to my own. I stood and left the path, moving into the trees' embrace, and all around me the air shimmered with life and a kind of magic. It was like walking down a tunnel of fireflies, only the firefly shapes were conjured by the dance of dappled light and shade. A soft sound hummed in the air, like crickets, but more, a storm of living song. I followed the tug I felt in my sternum, until the trees thinned, an old road, I thought, strewn with fallen branches and crumbling stones. The stones came from a little house, cracking under the prying fingers of vines. It sat slowly and silently becoming one with the land, beckoning me over the twisted wooden fence between stone wall and outhouse brick to the overgrown tangle of garden beyond. I was surprised to be greeted by an oasis of fallen leaves, forming an atrium-shaped carpet of blues, soft greens and yellows. They hinted a delicacy that made me pause before I could walk on them, yet still they seemed to whisper an encouragement of something more. The beauty and precision of their placement, a stark contrast against the overgrown weeds surrounding it. I pursued the untrodden path, when without warning, the garden suddenly dipped and I fell through to end at an expansive field. I looked up to see where I had been, but could no longer trace it. My eyes clouded from an unexpected gust of wind. I could only continue onward, wading through the haze. Through my squinted gaze, I admired how the trees looked like dancing carnival women, swaying to the wind just as I pushed through it. With yet another twist, the field came to an abrupt stop. I tasted the salt in the air before my eyes blinked to take in the expansive scene before me. I had found what I had sensed was waiting for me. Here, this thumbprint tag of nature, sheltering bustling baby turtles, lush water plants glistening, the entire universe contained in this earth-carved dish, life thriving seamlessly, effortlessly. I was here to be reminded of how a simple journey can lead to the most unexpected and beautiful discovery.
gosh, look at that. It has the most brilliant wings. I followed where she was pointing, to a huge moth spread out on a stone nearby. An emperor gum moth, I said. Did you know, they have no mouth, and survive off the energy reserves they built as caterpillars. They live for a few weeks at most. It's probably dead or dying if it's out in the day. She lowered the peach she'd been eating, frowning as if I'd soured its taste. I'd thought she might understand, given that she had chosen a set of ruins for our picnic. Perhaps she saw the lush green grass more than the crumbling brickwork. I saw both, and found beauty in the decay. One day, like the moth, I would cease moving and sink into the rich dark soil, roots and worms wiggling through me. It felt fair. I would become leaves overgrowing a ruin and being food for a caterpillar that would become a moth that couldn't eat. But other people didn't like to talk about that. They didn't like to think of how they would one day flow back into the universe, spreading into the water nourishing other life, the bright glow of stars, the air in others' lungs. Yet to me, it was a comfortable thought, the inevitable cycle of things. The way that, just like the moth, we fleetingly sail through the world as one thing, then move on to become another. It was a way that we could always be together, small parts of the bigger picture that included us both. Lives encapsulated in the beating of wings like our hearts, the veins of leaves like our veins, the shifting of wind like our breath, delicate moments like seeds in the breeze. I didn't say any of this, as we sat and picnicked beneath the ruined walls that would one day be tumbled down into the earth like the layers of history. Instead, I ran my hands over the grass, the land I knew hid the debris of time, until they met hers, and the rhythm of our hearts pulled me back into the sunshine of now. The summer blooms and reminds us of paradise. In this blessed meadow, we welcome the golden light. We feel the wisps of penstemon brushing against our calves. We are lulled by lavender filling the air, blessing each iris in clim with tender touches. We are lighter now, shrugging the weight of winter. We're reminded of our true selves. We're younger now, bursts of laughter joining the click, 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 chorus of cicadas. In wonderment, we observe the translucent wings and the intricacies of their design. We're here, witnessing heaven bleeding into earth, an explosion of coherence, the blending of all that is, in colour, in texture, a seamless oneness stretching into eternity. We're suspended in this moment, aware of our fleeting existence. Yet still, we breathe in the scene before us, becoming one with it too, for there is nowhere for us to be but here. As the sun rises, we take to the air, freedom in our wings, our soul alight with hope. As we zoom across the sky, we see our home in the rolling hills and towering flora. I ponder, as I am wont to do from up here, what is it made of and what lies beneath? Is it what is in me? Blood and bone and synapses firing, reminding us to breathe, to sleep, to live? Is there a spark beneath the earth that gives the world its heart? In the same way does that spark give me life? What will happen when I die? Do I return to the earth faded and frail and absorbed back into creation? What about that spark that is me? Do I return to the heart of the land, my spark joining the whole to build anew? Do I stay me or am I lost? I shake off my melancholy and fly higher. No matter. What tomorrow becomes will be left for tomorrow. Today I shall soar.
The lands on which we live, grow and dream hold so many stories. They shape us, nurturing who we become through the environment we grow in. They provide us sanctuary and at once may expose us or threaten us. They hold our history and have so much to tell us if we're willing to listen. This exhibition has shown how each of the contributors connects with the land, noting the resilience of nature to the marks we make, the wonder of the small things, the magical impressions the land can create, and how alive our home is in so many ways. We hope you've enjoyed our insights and the creations of our imaginations, and that we will have inspired you to look closer, to listen, to the land around you, a land alive.